So Mandy McCullough is about to join us with a live human model. So this will be very impactful. And Mandy is a veteran stylist of over two decades. In 16 of those years, she's been a Redken artist. She's also a salon owner near Seattle, Washington. And has her Mandy's goal is to inspire each person inclusively. She is driven to help career-minded stylists live their best life through continued ed and mentoring. Let's welcome the wildly talented Mandy Mikola. Good morning, Katie. Hey, everybody. I just want to lean in and say hi. Hi from wherever you guys are joining us today. Another beautiful Tuesday morning of Sambia Education. So excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all of you who are showing up to watch this video today. Uh, so yeah, like Katie said, we're doing guy's hair, but today I'm not just doing any guy. This is my husband, Joel, who's been nice enough to volunteer to come hang out. He's playing hooky from work a little bit this morning to do that. So here's what we wanna focus on today. One, we talked about sheer overcome. This is really just about sheer cutting. And I'll tell you, if you saw on my uh, Instagram and social media posts, I cut men's hair, but I'm not a barber, right? And a lot of times I have so much respect for barbers and they, the clipper work that they do and the fades that they do, that is not my expertise. However, I have a lot of male clients in the salon and I think there's some really specific things that we can do as hot tips to make this better when we're working with our male guests in the salon. They're different than our traditional female guests. Now, in addition to that, what I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna just turn Joel so you can start seeing this section a little bit and I'm gonna bring this in because I wanna just get right off the bat with doing some of this work today. The first thing I'm doing so you can see is I'm sectioning off of the parietal ridge and I'm just isolating the top out of the way. So I'm working from below the parietal ridge. If you come back to the front, tip your chin down just a little bit just there. If you want a clear guide of this to make sure where the parietal ridge is, we take one comb and place it on the apex, the high point of the head. And I'm going to take another comb and I'm going to place it on the side of the head. And you can see where that makes an exact 90 degree angle. That's that change of direction right here. So when we work below the parietal ridge to start these haircuts, what I'm doing is actually working to build that square shape through the side of the head. So what we want to do though is recognize how do we make this a great experience for our male clients? I also was going to say that as I go through this haircut today, this follows another haircut I did for Samvia live channels of Perfect Pixie in a bit. Katie's going to put that up there because the sectioning is all still the same. And this is why this is a really versatile haircut, whether we are cutting on honestly any gender, because this really could be for any gender of hair, right? This doesn't have to be for guys. We're just kind of speaking in that language today. So here's how we start. So first of all, what I always like to do with guys is pre-prep their hair. So it's been shampooed and conditioned, but I bet if you know, let me see it in the chat part. Most of our male clients don't like to use conditioner in the shower, right? Like they're one and done. So it's really important that we prep the hair with a product like this is Redkins When United. So this is a light leave-in spraying conditioner. So it's going to make it easier for us to get our comb through the hair. Now, in a traditional haircut, short, I might start in center back, but for this haircut, I'm actually going to come and start on the side. When we talk about working with our male clients, a lot of times they're not sure how to use the language to let us know what they want. So if I start on the side in this first panel, I'm going to have you turn here. So if I start in this first panel, what we can do is come to an agreement about what that length is going to be for the end result. So we always start in this first part so that they can see it. So I'm going to have you turn back to the front. Now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to work in vertical sections, starting from the front, picking up the hair, and we've already decided that we're going to take this at about finger length for him. And I just want to talk about these shears. See, this is, these are the Sam Via dry cutting shears. These are the six and a half inch, I think. I don't think the sevens. But when I'm cutting with men's hair, I like a long shear. It gets me through the hair faster. I'm taking vertical sections. So look, now I can just put this shear in and cut and come in and done. Now I'm gonna take another section, I'm gonna have him turn so you can see this line of section I'm taking. A vertical section, I'm gonna make sure that the hair's been saturated so it helps me stay control and out of the way. Now I'm gonna have you come back to the front. You can see here's my fingers. Now notice what my finger position's doing. Notice how it's flat to the head, but as the head starts to curve in, my fingers still stay straight up and down. That gives us more of a square silhouette. So once I come in, come in using my long shears to cut into that length. 
And I've done two vertical sections. Now I'm going to do one more. So again, turn your head for me. But here's my vertical section. But I don't need out of the way. Here's another thing. How am I combing this hair? Notice I'm going to comb from both sides to make sure that it's pulling straight out from the head shape. And go ahead and come back to the front again. So now we've completed the length on the side. Here's where I would talk to my male client and say, okay, let's look at this in the mirror and does this feel comfortable to you? So I might even give him a hand mirror so you can see a little bit closer up what's happening, but then we can decide, yes, this is the length he had in mind, or you can say, no, let's go a little bit shorter, or maybe we even need to move into clippers to even take that down closer to the skin. So now all this detailing that's going to happen in the sideburns and around the ear, I'm going to save that for the end so we can talk about how to do all that detailing. When I travel and I'm teaching, this is one of the number one questions that people have. How do we get that cleaned up around the ear and how do we do the neckline? So now that we've established this length, I'm going to continue all the way around. Because I'm starting from the side and I'm going to go all the way to the other side, how we comb the hair is going to be vital for consistency in this shape. So I'm going to have Joel turn again. We're going to just continue with these vertical lines of sectioning. And if the hair starts drying out, I need to make sure that I'm wetting it down. Think about we want the fabric that we're working with to stay consistent in its weight and uh, texture throughout the whole thing. So if the hair starts drying out, it starts skewing my guideline. Wet hair is way easier to see, uh, see the guideline when the hair is wet. So continue with vertical sections. Now, keep in mind, watch how I comb. I'm going to comb from the back. Now I'm going to turn and comb from the front. My finger position, now come back to the front, like right, turn just a little bit more, just that way. So notice how my finger position is vertical straight up and down so it's close to the head shape on the base but it's moving away from the head shape as it turns to where the head's curving and i have my guide from the previous section so i can come in and cut now once i get below the occipital my fingers are going to start cutting to what we call the planes of the head they're going to start following the head shape that's how we're going to taper that shape in once we get this length cut in, then I'm going to come over and detail it with sheer over comb. So I really want to give myself a head start with this. Now, Joel, um, how long has it been since you had a haircut? Do you remember? Uh, um, three weeks, four weeks. Oh, no, it's been longer. Is it? So I asked Joel if he'd be a model for this, like, probably three weeks ago. So he hasn't had a haircut. I bet in about five weeks, if yeah, I had to guess. Oh, probably. So he's been really patient. So he's a really good model for us today because we're really going to get in here and be able to cut off some length. So coming through. Now, here's the beauty of this. When I'm working with cutting principles, so what are principles? That means I understand my finger position, my finger angle, what type of shear I'm using, the head shape. Once I understand those principles, all of this goes super fast. and I can continue through. So now I'm going to have you turn so your knees go that way. Perfect. So now you can see me cutting around the head. So vertical sections. Now imagine if my habit is to comb from one direction, comb from one direction, comb from one direction. What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to keep pushing the hair this way, lining up with my guide. It's going to continue. It's over principle of over direction, right? It's going to get longer as it goes back. So that's why we need to make sure our combing stays consistent. One side, the other side, make sure I see my guide, watch my finger position, Come in and cut. Then one side, the other side, come in and cut. Now you can see, turn you, nope, go the other way a little bit. There you go. Now do you see how my finger position's changing? It started here, right? So as the head curved, it comes in, but my finger's still straight. Once I get to the round of the head, the occipital bone down, now my finger position starts cutting to the planes of the head or to the shape of the head. So that gives me that tapered line in. All right, so I'm going to continue through here. Come from both sides. And this is where you can really use your mirror as a tool to help you stay consistent with your finger position, your elevation, all of those mechanics. Okay, now here's another hot tip. A lot of times, let's say if you're cutting, I'm just going to say like a little kid's hair, like a little boy's hair, and they're really squirrely and round. 
Um, they're really squirrely and round. No, they're just squirrely. They move around a lot. In that situation, I'll go through and cut all of this from above the occipital all the way around the head. Quick, 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 fast. You can get that done really fast. Then I'll say, okay, tip your head down. I'll come through and match that line through the base at the end, just to try to make it as fast as possible. Because a lot of times when we have clients that move around a lot, it's hard to continue that line vertically all the way down around the head shape. So it's a quick and easy way to work through these haircuts. Okay, I'm gonna continue through here. And again, watching my finger position, my finger angle, make sure that I'm combing from both sides. Now notice how these shears, because they're so long, notice how much hair I can cut at once. If I have like a little detail shear, like a small shear, that's gonna take so much more time to cut through this haircut. My haircuts in the salon for these type of shapes, short haircuts, I book 30 minutes for it. And it tends to be still enough time. We can talk about home care. We can get the next appointment pre-scheduled, all the things that we wanna have happen. So continue through. Now you can see how much more quickly, once we've established the guide, once we've established our pattern and we understand head shape, now I can just work through this almost in salon speed for you keep going. Okay, so now, Joel, what I'm going to have you do is you're going to turn all the way to the other side. So work through the back of the head precariously. There we go. Good. Okay. So as I'm doing this, here's what I want to hear from all of you who are watching. How many of you are barbers or how many of you aren't barbers, but you cut men's hair? Let us see in the chat. What are you doing? And what are some hot tips that you do in the salon when you work with these types of clients? Let us see it. And I'm going to just keep working through this head shape. Oh my gosh, this hair is so long. It's going to feel so good to get it cut. Okay, and now turn a little bit more towards me, good. All right, so now working more in salon speed. Remember, here's how we started this off. You can see on this side, tilt your head a little bit this way. We sectioned with a horizontal line around the parietal ridge to separate the top from the bottom. This allows us to work in a square shape and follow the, head, um, follow the shape of the head and then build out that more square shape, which is more like what we want for guys if we want to match the face structure of the squareness in their face here. So that's why we tend to follow that line of sectioning. This line of sectioning also follows another class I did with the Sam Via team, and that was Pixie Perfect, I think is the name of the class. Katie's going to get a link up in the chat for you because the whole idea is, is that while we happen to be doing a guy client for this haircut, this sectioning that I'm going to show you, particularly when we get to the top, can be done anytime you just need a short haircut. We just change finger angle or our finger position or the length in which we cut the hair to get to that end result. So the sectioning is great for any really short haircut. Okay. Katie, did we have some, do we have barbers in the house? Do we have hair cutters in the house? What are we... We got both. We have oh, yeah. Willie, Willie, who's a barber, Cherie, who's a stylist, or not not a stylist, but just learning from the videos. And we have a lot of other stylists, Zoe. So thank you guys for participating. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Um, and like I said, you know, like when you have somebody who's truly a trained barber, it is such an awesome craft. You know, their work is beautiful and it looks so cool and I love watching it. But for me, my passion is being a hairstylist in the salon and working on all genders of clients, all different types of haircuts. And I never went in and specialized in those barbering techniques. But nonetheless, I have a lot of male clients who come in. Maybe I have to turn this a little bit more. Um, a lot of male clients who come in and it works for them because they keep coming back. Okay, let's see. Yes. Okay, working through this, I'm going to get these last two sections done. Okay, now put your knees back to the front. Perfect. Good. And finish this. Now, here's the other hot tip I'm going to say. And let's see if you can take your head all the way down, 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 down. Okay, and there you go. Down a little bit more if you can. Good. Okay, so I just want to talk about head shape and where, how the head shape moves as we move around the head this way. Because if we put a comb on the side of Joel's head and we look at where it lifts off, 
you see if I put it so it's right above the ear, the head is continuing to curve as it comes to the front. So let me just see if I can go over to the side. Let's cut. So do you see if I put the comb here where it sits flat to the head, but see how the head starts curving and turning in as it comes towards his face. So think about that. Go ahead and come all the way back up now. Because if my finger position continues to come straight out from the side of the head, by the time I get to these front corners, if I'm coming straight out, I'm actually going to get length in this corner. So we need to watch where that head shape starts to curve. And even though this is the side coming here, do you see I need to actually curve my finger position in towards the face so that the length stays consistent as it did on the side as it comes to the front. So when I come into this front section, I'm watching my finger position, finger angle, coming in and cut. That's going to make less hair for me to have to clean up afterwards because it stayed even consistent all the way through. So finishing up from the parietal ridge below, we were cutting in vertical sections with vertical finger position at 90 degrees, like just straight 90 vertical, right? Allowing it to gain a little bit of length as it comes up to that corner of the head at the parietal ridge. Now we're going to move to the top. This is where the sectioning is really important, and this is where the versatility of this haircut comes in so you can switch it up. So I'm going to have you tip your head all the way down again to there. Okay, now here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take a diagonal section that goes from the back of the crown all the way up to the front of that parietal ridge line. So I'm going to come through like this and take that off. So now you can see this section that I've isolated. Now come back up and look to the right and then to your head sideways down. So now you can see this section. Now stay right there. Now what I'm going to do, a lot of times, this is kind of where I'm gonna break the rules. A lot of times as I go through here, the rules would be continue with that vertical line of section as you come up and those vertical uh, finger position. But what I tend to do is look at where the natural movement and direction is going to go with the hair, and I tend to follow that. So you can see Joel's hair is actually, the movement is to want to go forward a little bit. So that means my line of sectioning is going to change from vertical, which I did from below the parietal ridge, into this section. I'm actually going to follow that, and I'm going to go on the diagonal. So I'm going to show you that section here in the camera. So here's my section, my diagonal section, and I'm going to pull this in just a little bit more so you can see. So here's my diagonal line of sectioning and I'm going to keep them in this position just so you can see. I still want my fingers to be coming straight out from the head shape because I still want to gain length as I come into that corner but I'm going to change my line of sectioning to diagonal because that's the direction of his natural growth. Coming in you can see I have a guide below matching to this length here. Find my guide and cut. Now I'm going to do it again. Line of sectioning now so you can see I'm going to have him bring his head back up. I want you to watch where my finger position is. Diagonal line of sectioning. My finger position is diagonal. Look to the right. My finger position is diagonal, but my finger angle is straight out from the head. Come in and cut. I'm going to have one more here. Come in and so now as this blends together, now we have that smooth transition from what's happening in the corner of the head shape versus what's happening below the parietal ridge. But because the natural movement is forward, it's going to have a softer blend than if I had continued to take these vertical. So same thing on the other side. I'm going to have you tip your chin back down. Will you give it up in the chat for Joel, my model today? If you guys didn't catch it in the beginning, this is my husband. How many of you have ever used your husband for a model in anything in life because they're available and they love you a lot and they'll sacrifice their time this way in the morning. So, oh, Annette, thank you so much. That blends beautifully. Thank you. I love that. Okay, so here we go with this section again. So what we're going to do, I'm going to have him turn this way. We're doing a diagonal line that's going to go from the back of the crown all the way up that's going to meet to the front of that parietal ridge line. So I'm going to come in and take that section and come it out of the way a little bit cleaner. Now, if you get to a place where you're having a hard time seeing your sections, what do you think you need to do? I'm reaching for it. I'm reaching for it. We need a little bit of water. All right, especially on short hair. If you want to stay in control of your sections for consistency of end result, make sure that your hair stays saturated and in the same Whatever you started with, same saturation through the haircut. Okay, so 
here, what we're doing, I'm going to have you turn, choop, 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 there we go. So again, remember here, we're changing to diagonal lines of sectioning. So here's my section. I'm going to do that so you can see it. Uh, choop, 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 choop. There's my section right there. I want you to see it, but then I'm going to place his head position back up so I can cut because I can only contortion so much on these things for all of you. Okay, so same, all the rules apply. Notice my hand position has changed. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So my palm is to me. I'm right-handed. So my palm is to me. We would say this is hitchhiking. You can see my thumbs this way. Versus, here's what happens a lot of times in the salon when we get to this place. We come in and we do this. Let me turn you there. We do this. So how many of you have done this before? But look at, I can't see the consistency in my line of cutting because I've got so much in the way and it starts getting really awkward in my body position. And as I continue to remove, to move around the head, it makes it really tough. So as, as a right-handed person, as I move from center back to the right side of my client, I'm actually gonna change so I'm palm here versus cutting this way, all right? So coming in, finding that line of sectioning, finding my guide below. Once I have it, I can cut. Come in, line of sectioning, coming from either side, and I'm going to cut. And you guys know on these education videos, we're doing this from the comfort of our own home, right? So literally at our feet over here is our dog, Georgia the Pomsky. She is loving Joel's haircut so much that we told her she could give a little bark every time she liked what we were doing. So I don't know if you heard that, but she liked what was happening. Good job, Georgia. Okay, so now we're completing the other side. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do, I want you to pay attention. We're gonna talk about cowlicks in the back. I know this is a big challenge for a lot of stylists when I go out and teach. So we're gonna talk about this. So here you can see, let's turn this way. You can see that blended perfectly. So we did vertical finger position, uh, vertical finger angle below the parietal ridge. We followed the direction of hair growth as it came through the parietal ridge. So we changed to diagonal finger angle, but still kept it square as we came through there. So we're gaining some length as we come through that parietal ridge area. Now we're gonna go to the back. So I'm gonna have you turn your knees that way for me. Um, actually, no, let's do this. Turn your knees to that direction. Oops, sorry, you're good. Okay, and now I want you to turn your head back this way. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about with calyx, is that what we want to do, everyone has this directional growth in the back of their head. So we need to, again, just like we did in the parietal ridge, look at the line of growth, where's the direction of growth, and comb the hair into that place. So I'm going to find that natural growth and comb it into place, then my finger position is actually gonna follow that line of growth as I go all the way through. I also wanna watch how short I can cut this so you don't get like the rooster bits, right? That stick up right there. We don't want the rooster bits. So what's gonna happen, let me just adjust that a little bit for you. Oh, that's a nice backlight in that area. Ooh, 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 ooh. There. there we go. Okay, so as I come through, I'm gonna come in and find those lines. Remember, we come from either side, so we stay even and consistent, consistent straight out from where it grows. Bring it up and work around the directional growth in the back. Now, if I want to, I can play with my finger angle. If I think I'm going to get too short and get roostery here, I can take my finger angle from here. Now, do you see how I'm going to start getting a little bit of length in the crown? That's going to give us more of the ability for that hair to lay down and guys don't have to wait till like their second or third week after the haircut to finally get that to lay down for them. So let me move this up for us a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so coming in. All right, Katie, how are we doing? We're doing great. Um, we're just getting a lot of questions that are asking for more men's education. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Well, I think, um, I mean, I'm not going to give anything away, but I think Sam Via has some exciting stuff coming up later this year in regards to men's cutting. Am I right? You're right. And uh, we can't really share too much, but you guys keep following us because you'll hear about it. <laughs> yeah, that's all we can say. That's all we can say to you right now. But um, I was tipped off on some stuff and I think you're going to be really excited. I think you'll start seeing a lot more men's cutting coming up with Sam Via. Okay. So 
Just to recap, we first section from the primal ridge below, our finger position and our finger angle was straight out of the head shape, so it stays tight below this line ridge in the mid, mid area of the head, and then it starts to square out and get longer as it comes through the primal ridge. We did that all the way around. Then, from above the primal ridge, we took a, tip your head back down again, we took a diagonal line that went from the parietal ridge all the way to the base of the crown, and then we went through and connected that. Our line of sectioning followed the direction of growth for this client, so it's very customized to them. Now we're gonna go through the top. Again, let's talk about maybe breaking some rules. We wanna customize this. Traditionally, what we do is we go into what we call it red constraint graduation, meaning we elevate the straight up off the head into vertical 90 degrees and we cut. That's because it completes that square silhouette that we want, right? But what happens, do that so you can see my black one, square silhouette. What happens is then a lot of times our male clients come in and they say, this haircut was great, but this corner, they got too long for me, I couldn't handle it. Well, it was too square. So if we know we have a client who doesn't want that length as it comes through here, we need to change the principles of how we're gonna cut. Rather than cut straight all the way through, I'm actually gonna cut to the planes of the head. So I'm gonna have you switch over to this side one more time. Doing a good job today on your directions. Okay, so I'm gonna cut to the planes of the head, meaning I'm going to cut and it's gonna arc and follow the head shape as it goes through this way. And I'm gonna start in the center of the head shape and then I'm gonna to move to the left and then I'm gonna to move to the right. This means that I'm actually gonna shorten the length in the corner so it'll be balanced and consistent through that head shape, but as it grows out, it's gonna give more longevity. So we're sacrificing what we would do as a traditional square silhouette with guys, but we're giving them something that fits a little bit closer to their head. And so it's gonna give more longevity to how they wear their haircut. So coming in, and cutting and noticing I'm still using my longer shears. I love these dry cut shears from Samvia because they can be really effective and quickly work me through these shorter haircuts. But also, I know Katie was just talking about it, there's that amazing promotion right now with Samvia, the BOGO, buy one, get one half off, because when I come in and do detail work, that's gonna be too much shear. And so I'm gonna to wanna to come in with my shorter shear for detail work. And we talk about how to accurately cut around the ear and cut up around the neckline. So perfect promotion right now, BOGO, buy one, get one half off for all Sambia shears because it's going to help you complete your tool collection as you're working into understanding with short haircuts why we need more than one length of shear. Okay, so. You can see, look at that just blends so nice. That looks great on camera. Okay, now we're gonna have you come back to the front. So I want you to see how this looks on the silhouette. Tip your head there, just a little bit. Okay, so here's the side we've cut. Here's the side we haven't cut, right? So do you see, you can see the silhouette, how it's rounding to the head shape. This is what's gonna minimize that extra growth in the corner and give a little bit more wear into the haircut. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So let's see, now let's turn this way. Good, good, good. And I'm gonna continue over to the other side. So remember we're cutting the planes of the head from the back of the crown to the front of the face shape, coming in, establishing my guide, finding my guide from my previous section. Make sure you're still coming from both sides to cut that guide in to that length. And then, now I just have to connect from the parietal ridge to what I did above that line of sectioning. Mandy, we have a question. Do you ever use the razor in your blending? If so, where in the cut would you use the razor and why? Great question. So right here, I have my Samvia razor. And so, yes, the answer to that question is I would. But here's what I use. it. If it's getting really short, right, like this is finger length for me. Razor for me works great when I want texture. It's an up and down movement that takes hair from straight to breaking it up into pieces like that, right? But when I'm only working with one inch of hair, it barely gives me room to work with my razor. So sometimes the end result is more fuzzy than texture. And the minute that hair starts growing out by week two or week three, it doesn't have as much smoothness to us because it's been so fuzzy. So for me at this length, I tend to start working with shears. And if I wanna remove weight, I'll come in and do it with 
point cutting versus coming in with razor. But if I have somebody, if this was a client who wanted to have, um, let's say like a full one and a half to three inches of length, that would for sure be an opportunity for me to come in with my razor to work with that cut. So to me, it's about the movement of the razor. How much movement do I need to get the accuracy of texture that we did, we expect with the razor? Um, but because it's a shorter length, I tend to just work with shears and I'll point cut. So hopefully that answers your question. But awesome. Thank you for asking. You guys keep the questions coming. It's great. All right. So I'm just making sure that this is connected through here. Oh, shears. Okay. Now, as we come through, I have this front front length right here. If we've cut to the planes of the head, it should be the same length here and here, but depending on how they wear their hair. So that needs to be part of the consultation. Do they tend to kind of push that up with product? Do they push it down? I know that Joel is going to wear this in a way that I don't want this. Let me see if you can um, tilt your head sideways a little bit. Okay. So you can see this length. I don't want this to completely follow to the plane because it will start cutting this so short that if he wants any versatility and movement, he's going to lose it. His only option will be to wear it straight forward. So I actually want this around from where you can see the round of the head coming down. I actually want to square that out a little bit. So it's just about where I want it to be. There's just a little few baby hairs that I want to catch up. In that spot. Okay. All right. Come all the way back up and let's go. So you're back to facing the front again. Okay, so now we're starting to get into the details. And I think this is where a lot of questions come in about how to do this. So like I had already mentioned, now I'm going to switch. And I love a good Zambia swivel shear, right? Because now I'm going to start moving around the ear and I want to be able to have control. So this swivel makes it so it's still comfortable on my hand and my wrist. So now coming back, just look that way. Let's start working around the ear here. So what I'm going to do is just cut out the ear all of that length. in the front and behind the ear. Now, if I want to, and I might pop out just some little trimmers to do that too, you totally can, but this just gives me a little bit more control. And now let's turn to the other side and do the same thing over here. So combing this down, I'm coming with my shears, shorter shear, swivel shear. So see how now I have control. Look at how this shear helps my hand stay more comfortable as I cut around the ear and then I'll do this so you guys can see that down and just come in and cut all right Mandy I love that your entire cut your wrist has been neutral yep and for me I struggled with a lot of like short haircuts with doing you know the bent wrist in those like tight areas so yeah and I mean just think how long do you want to have this career, right? We have to really think about our body position and what tools we're using. So one thing that I think is really special about the Sam Via tools is that Sam is always thinking about comfort. Sam has been in this industry for such a long time. And I'll just tell you, his physical ability is just incredible. And it's because he's been so thoughtful about not only how does he position himself when he's cutting the hair, whether it's his body, his arms, his wrist, or his hand, but he also thinks about that every time he makes a tool. So that's why we come in with such incredible things like these swivel shears. Uh, okay, so now let's go here. Sheer over comb. Let's talk about it. So what I'm going to do is I need to tighten up all of this where the sideburn is around the ear. And I want you to think of the head shape. I now want you to take, we did the parietal ridge below. On the side of the head, I want you to split that in half one more time because there is this kind of bone that comes out. Come back to the front. If I take a comb and I put it on the side of his head, do you see how it starts lifting off right about here? The parietal ridge is here, but the head shape lifts it off of the midway. So we're going to do shear over comb from the base of the hairline up to where that extension or width starts happening in the head shape. So come here and we'll try this a couple different ways so you guys can see. My comb is going to come in fine teeth with my shears horizontally and then I can start taking this length off. Now I will say this for me is easier once the hair starts drying. So it works out perfectly. We do all of the uh, cutting work and getting the silhouette in while the hair's wet. But then when we do shear over comb, we really want to transition to something a little bit more dry so we can see the line that we're creating. But you can see just right there, that one little bit, 
just took us up to where that width starts happening in the head shape. So that was my first panel in front of the ear. Now I'm going to work on top of the ear. So my comb comes in. Now I'm going to come in. I could do short or long shears with this. It just depends on how detailed I want the work to be. Keep in mind, if we look at what the curve of the head does, every time I place the comb where it lifts, do this, where the comb lifts off is one flat spot on the head. So here's a flat spot, here's a flat spot, here's a flat spot. If I come in with longer shears, what's gonna happen is I'm ultimately, let me just hold this one for a second. If I come in with a longer shear, do you see now I'm extending beyond those flat spots and I'm gonna get length on the furthest outsides of it. So by working with a shorter shear, it gives me more control so I don't have to keep going over and over and over again. It helps me stay flat to that bubble that I'm working in. So coming through, and remember, we're only doing this up until that width happens in the head. Now I'll come back to the front. Let's see, I think if I stand in front of you, you can see, where are we at? Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, look at that. You can see a difference between this is the side that hasn't been sheer over comb yet versus this has. We're getting this really nice and tapered on there. Now let's do it over on the other side so you can see. So let's turn this way. So coming in, my comb's horizontal, my shears are horizontal, working up until that width starts on the head shape. And again, do you see how I'm working around this curve of the ear? If I had a longer shear, that would make it really challenging to do. So this is why it's so nice to have different lengths of shear so that you have control in those detail areas. Now, I still have a little bit of length in here, so I'm just gonna turn my comb to a position so that I can get right into it. And now come through this next panel or next bevel. Make sure, I know this is hard to see on this side, so forgive me as I go through there. But you can see how nice that blends. So now as we come back to the front, see Lily saying, thank you, Mr. Via. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Mr. Via. Okay, so come here and then there we go. So do you see how nice and tapered that is on the sides? We're going to do the same thing in the back. So now, Joel, I'm going to have you turn so your knees go back and out that direction again. Now we need to start detailing here. And the same thing, shear over comb. I'm going to start from the base of the neckline, and I'm going to work up to where that occipital ridge or where the width starts in the head shape. So tip your chin down. And now I'm going to come in with horizontal comb. Let's do that way so you guys can see. And this, and I'm going to come in and start cutting. Now, the movement of my comb, you need to think about that. Here's what's going to happen. As my comb moves, I want it to follow the head shape until the width happens. Then it's going to lift off the head and continue to go straight. So I'll say that again. The comb's going to follow the head shape, come up to the width on the head where that happens. Then it's going to continue straight up. If the comb continues to follow the head shape around, then I'm going to continue cutting this shorter and shorter and rounder and rounder. So be really thoughtful about what your position is with your comb and what the movement is that's happening through there. And here's where my comb starts getting straight and lifting off. Then I can continue through these bubbles. Remember the reason I'm using the shorter shear is because it helps me stay in control with the round of the head as I move from right to left. Through. And let's have you turn all the way to the other side. Looking nice, Joel. Um, <laughs> Mandy, we got a question. When is the best time to use a longer shear? Perfect. So longer shear is so when I started this haircut and I was working below the primal bridge in vertical sections with finger, vertical finger position, that's when I was using this long shear. Because look at where my fingers are. I'm working down this head shape. Look at that shear. It fits perfectly within the section that I'm cutting. So this is like, just get it done. Versus if I had done this part of my haircut with a shorter shear, or I know some of you even maybe have a shorter shear than what I'm showing you, then look at, I have to take a cut and a cut and a cut and a cut. And every time I cut, 
it can change the consistency of that guideline. So if I have one lung shear just to get it done, I don't have to keep guessing on that guide and consistency of my length as I go through. But when I come in and I start detailing, I'm doing things where I have to be more aware of the curves of the head or what's happening with the bevels or the panels of the head. That's when I like to come in with my shorter shear. Like this. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and work through this section. And now I'm coming over here to this part of the head. I'm gonna have you tilt there so you can, so you guys can see what's happening. And let me see if I can even, oh wow, look at that close up with your ear. You probably had no idea you'd ever have your ear that close. All right, so here's my comb and I'm gonna come in and clean this all up. Don't be afraid to move your client's ear out of the way to get in there and get that blending done. All right. Good. Uh, okay, I'm just going to check this a little bit. Here's the other tip. A lot of times you really want to make sure, go ahead and come all the way up, use your mirror, especially when you're working with sheer over comb and you're trying to make sure you're even and consistent in that graduation or taper that happens. Because from here close up, it's hard for me to see exactly how it's doing. But if I have you turn a little to the back, but if I look in the mirror, so now this is more true for how it would be in the mirror, I can more accurately see the big picture and see how that taper is working and if it's consistent throughout the head shape. So make sure that you're using your mirror on that. Okay, come to the front and I'm gonna have you, actually just stay right there. So let's go through a little bit more in detail this and here's gonna be some things that's gonna maybe position you a little bit differently than what other stylists are doing in the salon and how you detail this end result. So first of all, Let's talk about cleaning up this neckline right here. I actually always go to using my razor tool. Make sure it has a guard on it. Make sure it's a brand new fresh razor because we're gonna be doing this on their skin. So you wanna make sure that we're not going to, I don't know, transfer anything from somebody else's haircut onto their skin. So I'm just going to have him go, ahead and go there. And I'm gonna just start putting this line in. Now this versus trimmers in this section, right? Because I know a lot of you probably use trimmers for this. This is gonna get a little bit tighter than you would with trimmers. It also is going to create a softer, more natural organic line in the hairline around the base. Trimmers, remember, like when I go to the grocery store, do you guys look for a guy's haircuts? You can be like, oh, I know you got that haircut done like two minutes ago because that line is so strong. It looks clean and it looks sharp, but if we want it to be a little bit more organic and natural, we wanna soften that. So using a tool like a razor along the hairline to do that is going to help you get that end result. So coming in, and now just turn your shoulders a little bit so you guys can see, and that looks, turn, and now turn your shoulders a little bit. I know I'm asking him to like really switch his body position around, turn that way. Okay, and we're gonna come in and clean that up. Good, so do you see how soft this line is as we are putting that in there? I'm coming and detail that a little bit more. Okay, now come back just to your face and the side. Now, let's talk about around the ear. I actually am gonna grab my trimmers out for this. So I have these right here. And I just like, like just these little baby trimmers, they're super great. I wanna use trimmers, not a clipper for this detail work, the same reason why I use a short shear versus a long shear. I wanna be able to come in and work around the curve of the head as I go through. So trimmers are on, I can come in and detail anything around the ear, move the ear down, come in, Clean up anything that needs to still be cleaned up. Now, the other thing is I always like to check and see if they have any hair in their ear or on their ear. I'm gonna use a trimmer to do that versus like the razor that I use back here because this is such soft, sensitive skin. I don't want to nick it and you know, ears bleed forever. So then I can come just over the hair, over the ear. If there's any hair in there, clean it up. and then that side is done. Okay, come back to the front. So the other thing I wanted to talk about that I do with most of my guy clients, and I think my guy clients appreciate it, but if they have girlfriends or wives, they even appreciate it more. And it's about making sure you're checking with them and asking, can I trim your eyebrows for you today? Something we don't think about. Now I'm gonna come back in. Detail work, so with shears, short shears, so I'm gonna come in with my short shears and I'm gonna do shear over comb in the brow area to clean that up for them. So I just come here. Now the first thing I do is always say, go ahead and close your eyes for me. And their eyes are closed, so make sure you're telling them what you're doing. I'm coming in with my comb right here, go ahead and hold still. And then I can just 
scissor over comb anything in the brow area. And then I'll say, okay, I'm coming over to the other side because their eyes are closed. They can't see what's happening. Come in and come that in, trim that up. Okay, go ahead and come back to the front. Okay, so we're getting there. Now for the sake of time, you guys saw me demonstrate the detailing more on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and do this after camera today because I think you guys have it. Um, but here's how we wanna finish this. At the end of any short haircut, no matter who it's on, I always like to take them back to the sink and rinse out all the loose hair. So whether whatever gender you live in, it's an important part of a short haircut because nothing's worse than going home and your haircut's fresh, but you have all those loose hairs coming down. So that's what I would typically do. We're not going to do it today, but we do want to make sure we finish with blow dry. So I have my Sambia blow dryer here. Let me get it out for you. So come in, power dry this, hair out. Now remember, we started out this with haircut, this haircut with using Redken One United because we know a lot of guys skip that conditioning step in the shower. So this is great hair education for home care for them. Then what we're gonna follow up is with texture. And here's the one thing I'll say to product. With guys, I always ask to like them, what's your favorite delivery system? Do you like it as a pump? Do you want it as a spray? Are you used to putting your fingers in something? Because guys don't always have the terminology to say, I want a pomade or a mousse or a gel, but they know like how they want to touch it. That's an experiential process for them. And then they sometimes will know, I kind of want the finish to look like this. So we're using actually Redken's dry shampoo paste. We just have a little mini one, which is awesome. And this is a combination of a texture paste with dry shampoo in it. So we get a matte finish. Because it is a little pot, it's going to be where my fingers go in it for picking up the product, making sure that I'm showing my client how much is on my hand, working it through. Guys won't ask for direction, but they want direction. So don't take that for granted. The more you're able to target what their needs are through your conversation and kind of giving them maybe more than you think they need, that's what gives longevity to your clientele in men clients. And I know I have guy clients who have followed me to every salon I work at, no matter how far it is, because they feel confident about knowing that I know their hair and I give them the education that they need through that. So, oh my gosh, honey, this is well-deserved haircut. So Joel was such a good sport because he um, has been growing his hair out for so long. So he's going to feel frisky and fancy free now that he has a new haircut. But hopefully you all have some tips to take home. Joel gets a haircut. Hopefully you all have some tips about guys' haircuts, but can we just say short haircuts in general? If you want to see more versatility on this, be sure to go back into the Sambia YouTube channel or Facebook page for my other short haircut video, which was Pixie Perfect. Same sectioning, but just how do we change it up to get a different silhouette? But um, thank you so much for having both of us here today. This is so nice. Uh, Katie and uh, this whole Sambia family, we always love spending any time with you, but particularly Tuesday morning for Transformation Tuesdays. Absolutely. Thank you, Nicolas. You both look amazing. And all of the tips were just so jam-packed. All of our comments coming in are just like, we want more of this education. So Mandy if and Joel, if you want to be back and maybe give some more tips on fading in the future. We would love to have that on our platform, but you guys make sure you follow Mandy on Instagram and TikTok. Her platform is full of robust educational videos. So head on over there, follow her. And Mandy, we can't wait to have you back on our platform. You are always a treasure to watch. Thank you, Katie. And Katie, Katie I'll also know for all of you who are looking for more live hands-on education opportunities, I am part of the team of Everything's included at the Redken Exchange, which is hair color and hair cutting in a three-day program. And that's coming up in mid-July. And of course, you can find that information from my Instagram or from redken.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Always continue getting advanced education because it will just further your business behind the chair. So thank you, Mandy. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye, guys.